Hello there. And welcome to day 11 of my 30 days of German language challenge. This is of course where I try to learn German in 30 days. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about pronunciation a little bit. We've done some work on words, namely 100 most common words in German for the past two days. So I've put it into my Anki, I have it on my device and I'm trying to learn it every single day. I'm going through it, but of course, I think that's going to take some time. Not to worry though, I'm still working on it and we will get back to it for sure. But like I said, today today is about pronunciation because I was watching some YouTube videos and I was trying to identify some specifics about German in terms of pronunciation because as I mentioned, pronunciation is really, really important for me in order to sort of let the language or sort of the general uh, perception of the language really, really sink in. I believe I mentioned this before, German seems very chewy to me, if that makes any sense. I was watching a bunch of people online, as I was saying, and it seems like the jaw is really closed. Obviously not 100% of the time, but a lot is kind of closed and the, the teeth are really nearby. There's like a little bit of space between the teeth and you sort of let the sounds out through that thin um, thin space, but that's how it seems to be to me. There's also a lot of movement in this direction, like my mouth uh, would go like, like a, eh, a, eh, a, eh, like, like that a lot. Uh, I mean, that's the perception that I'm getting. And then there is the German R. Oof. Should I perhaps say three R's? Because apparently there are three of them. Now, the German R, and this is, I have to say this is really confusing from all those videos that I've seen because they call it R and it doesn't sound like R and it certainly doesn't sound like three different things. Let me explain. The German R, R as in red. In German, the pronunciation seems to be R. It's similar to the French one. So the sound is pronounced from this part of your throat, really, of your neck, of your throat, whatever you want to call it. And that means you're not really using your tongue in any significant way. So once again, it should sound like R. That is one of them, apparently. And then the second one is different, or they say it's different, but to me, it doesn't really sound different, which of course, I'm no expert. But the difference between the two to me, at least, seems to be in intensity. So one of them is like very light, you just kind of let it go, like by the way, you're not paying much attention to it, it's there, we all know it's there, but eh, we're gonna pretend like it's not. For example, if we start with the softer one, the lighter one, uh, in my mind, we can say something like start, in other words, a start in English, yeah? A start, start. You can hear it in there, can't you? It's like a little bit of a rattle. You can hear the sht and the sta and then the ch. It's like sta, sta. It's a little bit there. I'm just not. I'm just not pushing on it. And that's to me the sound that I've seen online. So once again, sta. Yeah, just the touch of the R. It's the touch of the R. All right. Then if we look at the second R. It is the same thing in my mind, I just push on it. I just make the intensity go up all the way up to 11 probably, we can say. And I could say something like frei, yeah, frei. Or I've also seen this word strafe. Strafe is much more pronounced, it's much more present. You can identify it just like that very, very clearly. But all that I'm doing is really, I'm putting the sort of, everything in the same position and I'm just breathing more, using my voice more, I suppose you could say. But that, that is inaccurate. But I'm just, I'm just cranking up the intensity. It's the difference between start and frei. Right? And again, they call these two different sounds. I think they even use the IPA uh, phonemic chart to show that they are actually different sounds, but they just sound like the same thing with different levels of 
intensity. But that is very important to German, that is what I've taken away from it so far. That and the closed I'm just making up sounds at this point, but I'm just trying to demonstrate what I've seen and what I think it's it appears to be a typical German thing to do this, like Stuttgart, Stuttgart, Stuttgart. Like, yeah, I'm just sort of sieving the sounds through my teeth in a way. It's just there's a little bit of space left. And so I will try to emulate that better and incorporate it into my practice. And every time I'm on my, on my Anki doing my 100 most common words of German, I usually say it to myself very, very quietly, but I just think it's super good for you and important for practice to go through the motions at least with a little bit of sound, at least if there are you know, people around and you don't want to be too weird about it. So I think it's really good to just go through the motions because as I mentioned before, this is muscle memory. This is, I need to get it inside of my body and onto my skin to really remember it because in like my head I have a million ideas in my head and they come and go and it's that's not going to work so I need to go through the physical motions of, of it so I can mimic it and so my body my ligaments and all those movements get really inside but all right this has been it for today a very short update but I wanted to keep this short so I can practice more. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this very short video and the pronunciation tips, please click the like button below. And if you want to see more videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and you will surely get the very next one. All right then, I will see you next time and you take care.